for the AP European History exam. I wanna welcome you to today's session. As you're coming in, let me know um, how I can help you guys. If you like this video, press that like button and give me any of the questions that you guys have. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that we are all set up. The exam is today, which is insane. I can't believe how quickly this has all happened um, from the original um, date. What I'm gonna do is take you guys right away over to the exam schedule. And again, welcome everyone who's coming in. So the original AP European history exam was right here on Wednesday, May 13th at 4 p.m. Eastern. Of course, the makeup is today. That's gonna to be at 2 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday, June 2nd. So we've got just about three hours until the exam. And I hope that you guys have a great time um, doing all of this. If you run into problems, again, let's say you had tech problems in the original exam, you are eligible for exception testing if you wanna go for round three, third time's the charm. And if you take a look here, this is the exception testing date across the end of June, those last couple of weeks. And if we look for um, European history, we see that it's here Wednesday, June 24th at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So go ahead and um, make sure that you've got that just sort of you're aware that that option's there in case you run into massive problems. Now, a couple of things have changed since that first week of the test. Um, the College Board is letting you submit an email backup if the main ways of uploading your response don't work. So that's really great if, for example, your, um, your uh, you know, uh, original attachment didn't go through or you copy and paste it in an old browser or your file photos were too large or the wrong format, you can submit by email. They will give you all the rules and explanations. They'll give you about 10 minutes to do it um, and hopefully your exam goes through. Couple of things that we learned guys. And again, I wanna encourage you as you're coming in, great to see you. Oh, CBD, welcome. I know that you are back. You know that one of the pieces of advice I'm gonna give that you've given to everyone is make sure that when that five minutes begins as for submission time, you immediately submit that essay um, because you don't wanna run in the, into the opportunity or the issue of, of running out of time or playing it too close. Some people brag that they got it done in 30 seconds, um, but I wouldn't wait. Let's um, you know take our time and, and get this right. Um, and so that means submitting early. That means making sure that your browser is up to date. You might want to, after this video is over, refresh your whole computer, like close out all the 53 tabs you have open. Um, that's like a Tom Ritchie signature move, right? Like 93 tabs open. Get rid of all that, close it down, restart your computer. Make sure your tech is all set up for you to succeed um, and so you don't run into any issues. Um, okay, so the um, a couple of things we, we learned about the exam. Those of you who took it, um, in June uh, or in May know that there were at least four uh, distinct prompts and four variations in most cases of each prompt. To confound all the cheaters out there, the College Board very cleverly created different prompts with different batches of documents. So um, that really, and they went with obscure documents that don't lend themselves to easy Googling. This is a test that in which the open book, open note format is not, um, an opportunity to cheat, it's actually a risky distraction. That's why I have a video about this and I've been preaching hard about like using this very well. So for example, if you have the course and exam description binder, here's the world history one. Um, this, I'll leave it here. I like this in the frame, it's very scholarly. Um, here we go, art. Um, if you have the course and exam description, um, for AP European history, this is a searchable document that you can use. So let me show you guys how to do this. I'm gonna share my screen with you and I'm just gonna Google real quick, AP Euro CED. So this is what I do. When I do this, the very first file, when I Google AP Euro CED, the PDF right here, this is the file that you should have downloaded on your desktop. So that if the topic of your CED is the glorious revolution, oh, I know that, that's where it is. Good, I'll just do glorious rev, here I go. I see from the official college board, most recent exam description, exactly everything you're supposed to know about the glorious revolution. Unit three, learning objective B, all of the key concepts, and even over here under illustrative examples, are different people and things you can talk about. So if you're you're stuck for like, how do I come up with outside evidence for the Glorious Revolution? What the heck was the Glorious Revolution, right? You can get um, 
the uh, definitions of some key concepts right here. And that's going to fuel you through this. Notice what I did. I did Command F, Control F. Let's do it again with um, Haiti, right? Haiti is a part of the curriculum here. Here we go. Revolutionary ideals inspired a slave re revolt led by Toussaint Louverture or Toussaint Louverture in the French colony of Saint-Domingue, which became the independent nation of Haiti in 1804. You don't want to copy and paste this content, but it's this is the truth from the College Board. Another version of this is actually in our study guide pack, which we have on our website. If you haven't downloaded this, just go to uh, the link. We'll put it in the description in the chat. You can download um, our version where we made like a pretty picture version. Um, and you can look up the glorious revolution here. Um, you can make sure that you have um, all of these um, topics that you need. So when we look, for example, yeah, if you get the piece of Westphalia, um, it'll appear a couple of times here as quick kind of cliff notes, almost bullets for you to think about. If you're looking for contextualization clues, those are here as well. Um, or you wanna talk about causation, you can look at at some of these diagrams and things that we've made to try to make this nice and easy. What is neoclassicism? Boom, this thing, which is in Paris. Um, okay, so th those are just a couple of tips to deal with the open book, open note format, to deal with the timing. I wanna make sure that I'm answering any of the questions that you all have. Um, okay, yeah, so John, Nene, and everything about um, asking about what we think the prompt is gonna be. Um, we don't know, I, there will be, probably multiple prompts. Uh, I'm trying to think whether they'll have four full ones for the makeup. They may only have two um, this time and then they shuffle up the documents. Uh, it's, it's all anyone's guess. Um, and But we do know, of course, that it stops before 1914. Interestingly, they stopped at Napoleon. So they stopped a full hundred years beforehand. One other thing for you guys to note is that the College Board did not create a thematic DBQ for AP Euro the way that it did for AP US history. So AP US history had a DBQ that went from 1830-ish to like 1905-ish. That was a really long, that's like a freakishly long DBQ for AP US history. Normally it's 30 to 40 years. And that DBQ combined the concept of manifest destiny, the notion that America was being pulled out to fill up the whole beautiful continent of North America with imperialism, the expansion of America all over the world and the Philippines and Cuba and all these places. So they connected those two ideas over 80, 90 years. Will we see the first thematic DBQ for AP Euro? We don't know. In a sense, guys, it doesn't actually matter because a few key points I want you to remember is this, or are that these. Um, first, and we've done this on our practice guide. This is also available on our website in the link in the description um, and in the chat. If you go to free study guides, here's your AP Euro study pack. That's yours for free. You can have it open during the exam. You can have this open during the exam. And we've been obsessed with this at Marco Learning because it's a real strategy for how to think about earning points. You should not focus on earning the point for four documents. That is to say, using trying to use all five to get this point. That is not the game. Um, eventually you'll get there if you have the time. The game is to successfully use two documents. And we're recommending you actually do three just to make sure if you misinterpret one that you get that point. But describing two documents and connecting them to your argument, that's the main uh, point of, of uh, all of this. And, and you wanna make sure that you're doing this. This means guys that in a five doc DBQ, you don't need to worry about all five docs. You need to worry really about two and maybe a third one. It also means when you're looking for outside evidence in the open book, open note format with two great resources here, the Marco Learning Study Guide Pack, um, which has worked out for a lot of our students according to them, and the official course and exam description with these two things at your fingertips, you're gonna very quickly be able to find two pieces of outside evidence. So in some respects, as complicated as this is, as stressful as this is, the AP um, European History Exam is, kind of easy. If you're able to just grab onto two of the five documents that you know, grab onto two pieces of outside evidence, and then write as fast as you can to earn those points in sequence. That's what I'm going to recommend to you guys as a, as a really smart approach in such a complicated format. Personally, I think that the, that the College Board made choices that made this unnecessarily complicated, but it is overall um, pretty um, 
straightforward. Here's one thing I do want to show you all. If you haven't yet, um, and you're looking for review of content in these next couple of hours before the things, we've got a great playlist for AP European history. If you haven't seen it, Tom Ritchie's got the mega playlist on his channel. So of course, subscribe to that if you haven't. Um, but you can see Tom on Ritchie on our channel has these mega unit reviews that walk you through all this content. If you look, I'll just pull this up here. You've got, um, put that there. Um, you've got not only these, these things, they're also again on his channel, um, but we also have these things down at the end where we've got um, Tom writing three different DBQs talking through the strategy that we're using here, where we get that thesis, get those first couple documents, stack in outside evidence, and then go for the more complicated, longer points. Okay, I did wanna take a minute and just welcome everyone who's, who's joined and make sure that I have um, that any of the questions um, answered and, and uh, that I'm helping you guys as much as I can here. Um, so real quick, thank you guys for all the uh, support. <laughs> I know CBD, I'm gonna get like eight dislikes in this video because I said that the AP Euro ain't that hard. Um, so if you, a, a couple of things, um, the um, Tatum, the results, if you took the regular exam, you'll, it's July 15th is the published date from the college board to begin releasing those uh, results. Remember that, you're, that your essay is gonna be graded by two virtual or two readers remotely, right? So there's gonna be two expert graders from the college board, college professors, high school teachers, um, content experts, who will work through that zero to 10 scale. So your actual score for the exam before it gets converted to one through five will go from zero to 20. Zero to 10 from your first reader, zero to 10 from your second reader. And let's just say you got a 12 out of 20. The college board will then figure out how to take the prompt that you had and fit it into the one through five paradigm in the fairest possible way, hopefully. And then you'll get a score one, two, three, four, or five. We won't know a lot about the details this year, but remember if you took the exam in uh, May and you successfully submitted it, your teacher as of May 26th has access to the prompts and access to your essays on their secure lockdown browser account for AP Classroom. Um, and that's where some teachers discovered like, oh no, my student essay was missing some of things or it's just their initials at the top or they didn't have the initials at the top, which is not a big deal by the way, if you, if you forget that. Those are some of the things that are very important um, as we as we go through this process is that you know this has probably never been more transparent for teachers. They really get to see your responses. Um, and let's see, the makeup results of CBD will come later um, after this. And then the exception testing dates that I started with, those are these dates here. So here's the thing, guys, do not, do not dissolve into tears today. If you have a massive problem in your exam, I hope and pray that you don't. I hope it just goes smoothly, right? Today here, June 2nd at 2 p.m. Eastern time um, is your exam. Your backup exam is 4 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday, June 24th. Um, and so that this is the backup to the backup, the makeup to the makeup. Um, and this again is available on our website under 2020 exam dates um, and it's called exception testing. If so, let's just review. You log in 30 minutes before the exam, a couple hours from now. You wait around awkwardly. Um, you uh, find something to do because some people have gotten very nervous in those 20 minutes. You go into the exam, you charge ahead, spend about 10 minutes reading the prompt, reading the documents, planning your essay. Maybe you need 15 minutes. There's no exact number here. Six minutes is too few. 24 minutes of planning is too much. You work your way through those documents. You, um, you, you develop your plan to use at least three of them. You uh, write like the Dickens, you, st you, tack you stack in that thesis, you stack in those uh, topic sentences, you braid your evidence back into the thesis over and over again, grab that outside evidence, connect it back to your thesis, just kind of build, build, build. You're not writing an essay, you're earning points, earn those points. Then with five minutes remaining, you upload the essay. If there's a challenge and you somehow can't get the file uploaded, there is the option, they, they'll say, you have 10 minutes to email us your response as an attachment. And they'll give you an individually coded email that, uh, sorry, my sweater, uh, individually coded email um, that 
uh, you just you will send your attachment to you won't copy and paste your essay in and then hopefully your essay will be scorable and then you won't have to take that exam in June. Now I did want to check again on any of the questions that are coming in on this video um, in the chat on YouTube here. So um, let's see a couple things. Uh, the prompt will not be the exact as same ones as what we saw in the May test. That would be shocking if they did that. Um, let's see. Um, yes, dissolve into tears. Uh, good luck on the exam. The May one wasn't too bad. Yes, thank you, Soviet unions with a Z. Um, that wasn't, I feel like most people felt like the DBQs were there. You no, know, one thing got that one thing that people pointed out, guys, was that the DBQs in May for US. Euro and world surprised people in how short the documents were. We knew the documents were going to be shorter, but they were really short um, compared to, um, I think, what we were expecting. So if you look at the Marco learning practice test we wrote for the Glorious Revolution, it was a very good um, DBQ in terms of, <clears throat> and I'll take you guys to our website, show you how to find this. This is pretty straightforward. If you just land on our main page, it's right here. You just go to practice tests. Um, and then when you want to, uh, and this is, we have them in 10 subjects, right? This is the PDF for AP European history. Look at the, the DBQ that Tom Ritchie and, and Marco put together. It's a great DBQ in a normal year, um, but these documents ended up being so short this year that you would probably only get half of the length of, of some of these texts. So that, that's, an, that's an easy kind of factor um, as well to remember is it, it's going to it's going to be set up for you to move a little bit quicker. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. Um, CBD have already cried it all out. Good. And guys, listen, I yeah, I don't mean to make light of, of crying on the exam. Somebody just tweeted last night just in tears about trying to log in for this exam and not being able to. Um, I want you all to wash all that off. I want you to take all those negative emotions and those bad memories and all that experience and just push it out of your mind because this is a new day and a new opportunity. No one will ever see your tears on that DBQ. It's gonna be probably a Microsoft Word document or something that you're uploading. No one will see, if you, got a, if you get a four on this exam, no one's ever gonna see um, any of the frustration and failure and beating yourself up or being angry at the college board. None of that's gonna be there. So all that negativity is poison. Push it out of your minds, Focus on what you know how to do. And what you know how to do is earn points. If you don't feel like you know how to earn points, then watch our other videos, um, which really get into this point by point. And it's it's really important that you, you think strategically. So again, I'm gonna come back to this guide. This is what you should be focusing your attention on. And you should be trusting yourself at this point. CBD, I know some of you, you were in our student support this spring. You've been working very hard on this all like spring long since this all sort of went down. And everything that, that you've been taught, trust. The thesis is earned by 60 to 70% of people. It should be one to two sentences. At the end of your first paragraph, it should respond to the prompt. It should be defensible. And it should be a clear setup for you know, your response to the exact prompt they gave you, not just a summary of it. You should describe, not quote, describe two documents. If you are going to quote, it should be one or two words that are relevant or a little phrase, but not like a big quote. That's a that's just a mistake. Describe the two documents. And then after your description of the two documents, tie them back into your thesis. So what this this speech demonstrates is the significance of mercantilism to British policy in the 1700s, et cetera. Um, and, you, and then you come back in and here, we can further see this from the French and Indian War, the Seven Years War, as it erupted in the Americas and in all over the world and caused divisions among European powers. What, and then you get a little bit more specific, tie it back into the prompt. Keep doing this over and over again. Sourcing, or what we're calling POV+, plus. this is happy, hip, cap, whatever you guys call it, is grabbing one element, who the author is, who the audience is, what the author's purpose was, and explaining that for a document. Make it clear to your reader what you're doing. Then contextualization should be three sentences or so, ideally at the beginning of that first paragraph. And if you're typing in a word processor, you can go back and add it back in. Those three, four sentences there at the front of the first paragraph that set the stage for the time period that you're in. Then if you have time and you're a nerd and you really wanna go for, for, for broke, 
go for all five documents, go for complex understanding. Complex understanding can look like this. You don't need a conclusion for this essay. You don't get points for style. There's no points for grammar. There's no points for having a pretty first paragraph. You're, there's points for points, so earn them. But if you have time, throw in a little concluding paragraph that talks about the comparing this to a different time period or uh, causation or continuity and change um, or comparing it to another thing, bringing the pic widening the picture even further. Complex understanding is not a point you earn in a phrase or in a couple sentences or a conclusion, but you wanna gesture in that direction of, of showing the complexity of what's going on. So guys, I am here to um, answer your questions. Let me take a look. Um, so, and just a couple of things, I had said this earlier about prompts. We do not, I do not think that you're all going to get the same prompt and they will not be the same prompts as May. We won't know what converts to a four or a five um, until after the exam is over and it might be different for different prompts. Um, certainly if you got a nine or a 10 on, on the essay from both graders, that's going to get a top score on this exam. Um, and yeah, I'm just looking at, yeah, and Tom Tom Ritchie is speculating that eight points is a, is a four or five. So that's definitely true, but this is irrelevant. I want you all to like not worry about that issue and focus instead on how you're going to succeed today and let it let the graders take over the rest. Um, so, and then, so sourcing and POV, um, yeah, okay, a couple things, CBD, don't do a conclusion with five minutes left. If there's, when I say five minutes left, I mean five minutes before the submission window. Once the five minutes pops up on the screen, you should submit, wrap up your sentence, upload the file and get out of there. You can't run into the challenges that some of the students here in the chat have run into where they um, lost the exam. Um, you don't wanna take that, that exception testing. Now, a couple of questions here about outside evidence and sourcing that, and how to do it in the documents. I want, in, inside of your paragraph, I wanna insist again, guys, check out Tom, after this is over, check out Tom's videos here. This is our playlist where he goes over units one through seven, which are fair in this exam. And then take a look at these ones here at the bottom, especially these two, where Tom writes this Civil War DBQ. Um, there he is. And so he's going to actually kind of walk you through how he builds his paragraphs. I can say that in a nutshell, and how he counts on his fingers. Look at that. <laughs> um, I can tell you just in a nutshell, I like a, a, a body paragraph to look like this. Topic sentence that says kind of what this is about and how it supports a thesis. Document, grab a document, describe that document, then tie that back into the argument. Maybe if you're going to source the document, which is to talk about who the author is, talk about what that author's purpose was, talk about um, how the particular um, context, happy, hippie, cat, whatever you guys learned it as in school, what that context does to explain why the document is the way it is. So if it's a king delivering a political speech in front of the parliament, de you know, declaring the, his sovereignty, well, that's a very particular audience and a very particular speaker. So why do kings talk the way that they do? Why in a letter to a king are people always like, your most serene majesty, right? They use that elevated language because that's who their audience is. It's, it's part of the context that, that's creating that document. So that's what sourcing is about. And then you can tie the final paragraph, final sentence of the paragraph back into the thesis again. So again, there's a more nuanced version of this on our channel. I want you guys to check that out. Um, yes, let's see. Um, couple things. Um, yes, and, and Kaiser, by the way, for complex understanding, it is through the whole DBQ. Uh, there's no way you're just going to earn it with a phrase or reference. It's something that's braided through the whole essay. But you can, if you have, if you're sitting around with minutes to spare, which FYI, like nobody was, if you're sitting around with some of that extra time, adding in a few sentences at the end can help gesture in that direction. But that's like not where your focus is. Your focus is, um, you know, as much as you can, building point by point. Um, and for sourcing, you're only going to get points for two documents. Um, so, yes. So some of you have heard about this for the first time. I strongly encourage you. First of all, if thank you guys for joining. If you like this video, press that like button um, and definitely check out our playlist um, of this content because this is going to do a better job than what I can do right now at the last second. Um, and you can kind of go around and see, oh, right, this is how Tom is earning each of these points. And if you haven't already, definitely also check out the free study guide packs and, and resources we have. So again, a few things here. This playlist is here. 
go to the course and exam description. I'm going to copy and paste this for you all here into the chat. Um, click on that link. That is a document you should have on your desktop as you're working. Um, and then there's also this study guide, which we have available on our website. You just go to, um, if you just go on our homepage, you'll see study guides, click on this. We also have the link in the description and you can download this whole big shiny um, study guide pack that has uh, cheat sheets that you can use during the exam. It's not cheating on an open book, open note exam to, um, to have these documents here. What's key is that you don't waste your time getting lost in them. So listen, I wish um, I could do more. Um, let's see when you pasted the Google doc link. Oh yeah. So, okay. A couple of things. Yeah. So the, the Rania, just in a really broad way, this is a great question. If you are um, writing your DBQ, just high level, you want to log in 30 minutes before when the essay starts, you want to spend about 10 minutes plus or minus probably plus maybe 12 minutes or so, depending on your style, reading the prompt, reading quickly through the documents and building your argument with outside evidence, building your whole outline. And then you wanna spend every single minute you can until that five minute warning comes up, writing out all of those points. As soon as the five minute warning comes up, you uh, focus on, on uploading it. Um, okay, great. And yes, you can, yeah, that's great. So CBD's got this. Um, you can split up your documents however you like. I think the key is making sure that two or three are describing that and supporting your thesis and you can continue to use more documents to support your, your claims. Um, <clears throat> I won't predict any prompts. I, I will predict that there will be multiple ones, at least two, probably three or more, um, that there will, they will shuffle off the documents again. The documents are likely to be short. So speaking of being short, this is a pretty short review session. You are not alone. We're not leaving you stranded. I really want to insist that you guys check out our playlist right here for um, AP European history. On this playlist, you're going to see videos where we go through the point by point approach. We go through every unit, whatever you need. But remember this, you're not going to radically change your score between now and the exam. You can, but you can change the, the frame of mind with which you enter the exam. Go in there and believe in yourself. Go in there and focus on earning points strategically, not on being perfect, not on like, oh no, I made like one little mistake. Let me throw myself on the floor. Get back up off the floor, guys. You can do this. Um, you've been working on this, a lot of you all year. Um, so for the, the DBQ, um, the, the, the practice guys, just to remember what these are real quick, um, since I got a question here from Rania about this, I'll close with this. Um, which is, okay, so on our study guides page, we have this study guide pack, which I recommend that you use. So again, um, I'll just put this here in the, um, in the chat. Um, and then the, I would not use this thing. This is just as a reminder for you about what the strategy is. You'll see Tom pull this up in the video. So go ahead and check out those videos um, on our playlist. Be in touch with us. I'm gonna be answering questions here on YouTube. We're going to get you guys through every step of the way. That's what we do at Marco Learning. Um, and I really appreciate um, all your encouragement, support, all the likes. Um, be in touch with us, guys, also, because this summer, once this nonsense is over, we're going to be providing support for college admissions, SAT, ACT. That's really what we're, what we, a lot of us have a background in. So be in touch with us at Marco Learning. We want to help you through this and through everything we can. Good luck, guys.